Hey everyone. So the workout that I have for you today is a total body focused workout that's going to emphasize balance and stability training. So today's workout has two parts. The first part is going to be three rounds of three different exercises. The first is going to be a body weight single leg Romanian deadlift, which we'll do for 10 repetitions per side. The second movement is going to be a forward and backward bear crawl, which we'll do for five repetitions, moving four steps forward and four steps backward each time. And then the third movement is going to be an interim walkout with a core rotation, and we'll do that five repetitions as well. So our first movement is our body weight single leg Romanian deadlift. It's kind of a mouthful, but it's a really good exercise. Now, because this movement is a deadlift type of movement, it's going to emphasize strengthening the posterior portion of the body, which means the back side of the body. So the upper and lower back, the hamstrings and the glutes primarily, as well as the core. But the fact that this is a single leg exercise is really going to emphasize that balance and stability training. So we'll be on one leg for a good portion of this movement. So I'm going to show you the single leg deadlift from the side view. So that way it's a little bit easier to see. Now, anytime we do any kind of balance oriented exercise, we want to really focus on keeping our core nice and tight to maintain total body control. So we're going to move slowly and with control throughout the exercise. So starting nice and tall, what we want to do is we want to pick which leg is going to go back first or lift off the ground. So I'm going to choose my right leg, which means my same side arm, my right arm, is going to lower down towards the opposite side of my body. So all in all, it's going to look like this. We'll hinge first from the hip, keeping the back nice and flat, drop down towards the opposite foot, and then slowly lift back up to the starting position. And then we will repeat. Notice though, when I go down, I try to make an effort to keep my back nice and straight to maintain spinal alignment and just focus on hinging from the hips, which is going to promote hip mobility as well. So once again, nice and tall, we're going to hinge forward, extend the back leg behind us, reach for the floor, and then slowly come back up nice and tall to the top. So you'll do that for 10 repetitions on each side of the body. Now, if you want to add a little bit more challenge to the single leg Romanian deadlift, you can add a little bit of weight or resistance. You can use a dumbbell, a kettlebell, or I'm going to use my fancy wine bottle. Um, so again, showing you from the side, we're going to hold the weight in one hand, and that's going to be the arm that extends downward across the body as we perform the movement. So again, nice and tall, hinge forward from the hips, same side leg lifts behind us, dropping down towards the opposite foot, and then coming back up slowly with control to the top of the position. Now the other added benefit of a single leg Romanian deadlift that you'll probably notice when you perform them is you're going to feel a nice good stretch through the back of the leg that's standing on the floor throughout the exercise. And that's because we're trying to keep it nice and straight. So as we hinge forward, we're getting that flexibility or that stretch through the back side of the leg as well. So the next movement is our bear crawl. A bear crawl is a total body movement. We're going to get down on the floor on all fours to do it. And it's going to get our heart rate up in addition to working a lot of muscle groups at one time. Bear crawls also challenge our coordination. So it's a little bit more of a mind exercise too, as well as a body exercise. All right, so to get into our bear crawl motion, we're going to come down on the ground to all fours. So you want your knees bent underneath your body and your hips should stay down. So you don't want your hips to hike up in this position. So hips should be down in line with your back and your neck. And then as you transfer forward, you're going to use the opposite hand and foot to take a step and then repeat on the other side for four steps total. And then we're going to back it up using the opposite arm and leg again to perform the steps until we're back at the top of the motion. Now, if you happen to have a little bit more room than I do to move in and out of the exercise, you can take more steps forward and then more steps backward to increase the number of repetitions that you do if you want for increased challenge. But for the purpose of the workout, we're going to take four steps forward, four steps backward, and repeat that for five repetitions every time. So next we're going to do our inchworm walkout with a core rotation to each side for five repetitions. Now with an inchworm, remember that is also going to promote flexibility training, hinging from the hips, keeping the legs straight as we walk into and out of each inchworm that we do. Now the core rotation element is going to help us to activate our core as well as incorporate spinal rotation. So we're going to work the abs and the obliques as well during this movement. As we rotate from side to side, we'll be stabilizing on one arm at a time to do the rotation and that's going to incorporate shoulder stability as well to strengthen the upper body. Okay, so setting up for our inchworm walkout with a core rotation, we want to start nice and tall, hinge from the hips, keep the legs straight, drop the hands to the floor, walk the hands out to the top of a plank position, and then once you've arrived there, you're going to gently rotate, turn the body, reach the arms up to the ceiling, bring it back down, and then repeat on the other side, 
reach the arm and hand up to the ceiling, bring it back down, and then you're gonna walk your feet in towards your hands as far as you can go before you walk out for the next repetition. Now remember with any kind of inchworm walkout, you can perform them in a traveling forward motion like you just saw me demonstrating, or you can also do them in place. The change you would make there is instead of walking your feet into your hands and then performing the next rep by walking out, you would perform the inchworm, do your core rotations, and then simply walk your hands back in towards your feet and stand back up in the original position that you started. So in the second portion of today's workout, we're gonna do three more rounds of three new movements. The first movement is gonna be a push-up with shoulder taps and front raises for 10 total repetitions. The second movement is gonna be a reverse lunge to a hop for 10 repetitions per side. And then the third and final movement is gonna be a crab toe touch exercise, which we'll get down on the ground to do. And that again will be for 10 repetitions per side. So starting with our push up with shoulder taps and arm reaches first, it's a kind of multi-dimensional exercise. It's gonna incorporate largely upper body strength, but also focus on shoulder stability, coordination again, and a little bit of balance training because we are at times going to come off of one arm so that we're stabilizing the rest of the body on the opposite arm. So you'll kind of see what that looks like in just a second. So for the push-up position, we're going to get into a normal push-up position at the top. So the hand should be aligned underneath the shoulders and the butt should be down in line with the spine and the neck. Then we're going to bend at the elbows, drop down, do our push-up. Once we come back up, we're going to lift off one set of fingers to tap the opposite shoulder and then repeat on the other side, keeping the hips as still as possible, and then raising one arm up to the front of the body, followed by the other. And again, push up, tap, tap, reach, and reach. This movement can also be done with kneeling push-ups as well if you need the modification for the push-up. So in this case, you would do the push-up kneeling and then rise up on your toes for the plank position to do the shoulder tap, shoulder tap, and then the arm reach and the other arm reach. So keep in mind when you do your push-ups in today's workout that each push-up with an alternating shoulder tap and an alternating front raise all together is gonna to consist of one repetition. And you'll do 10 of those each time that you go through the circuit. So our next movement is gonna be the reverse lunge to the hop. So this movement is going to focus on low body strength, but it's also gonna incorporate some power and explosiveness with the hop that we're doing at the end of the movement. Because we're rising up onto one foot, we're going to also be incorporating some balance and stability training here again as well. So just giving the core that extra workout. So I'm going to show you the reverse lunge to hop from the front view and from the side view as well so you can really see it from all angles. So we're going to start with our feet together nice and tall. We're going to take one leg, bring it backwards into a reverse lunge position so the knee should back up to the floor or drop down to the floor and the front knee should not be further than the toes. Okay, so you want to make sure your chest and shoulders are aligned over your hips. And then as you come out of that lunge, you're gonna hop up onto the other foot just briefly and then drop back down. We'll go into your next reverse lunge, drive up and hop, drop into your next lunge, drive up and hop. So as you can see, you're incorporating a little bit of a jump at the top, not too high, and that's gonna help get the heart rate up and incorporate some power out of the bottom of that movement. So now showing you the same movement from the side, nice and tall, we're gonna lunge backwards and then up, drive the knee up towards the low abs and the chest and repeat. Again, not a very big jump, but just enough to kind of come off of the ground, incorporate that balance training and get the heart rate up. Now you can also modify the lunge with hop by taking the hop or the jump out of it and just doing a lunge to knee raise if you need to. And that would look like this. Reverse lunge, drive the knee up, reverse lunge, drive the knee up. So the other leg is still giving that balance work, but it's not actually leaving the ground. And remember for all three rounds of this part of the workout where you're doing the reverse lunge to the hop or reverse lunge with a knee raise, you're gonna do 10 total repetitions on each side. So it'll be 20 repetitions in total each time you go through the movement. So last but not least, we have our crab toe touch exercise. So we'll get back down on the ground in just a second to do that. So the crab toe touch is going to focus on full body strengthening as well as focusing a lot on the core and the obliques because we're going to be working opposite sides together. It's also gonna promote a little bit of flexibility training, ideally for the legs, because we are supposed to try to keep our legs as straight as possible when we lift them up to perform each repetition. And you'll see what I mean by that in just a second. Okay, so once you're down on the ground for the crab toe touch, you wanna to make sure your knees are bent and your hands are placed behind you, either fingertips out to the side or behind you, just whichever is comfortable for your wrist. Chest is up toward the ceiling. We're gonna lift up, bringing the butt and hips off, off the ground, and the feet should be flat on the floor. From here, what we wanna do is gently lift the opposite arm and leg together to try to meet the fingertips and toes across the body. 
and the leg that's going to lift should be as straight as possible to maximize that flexibility training. So we're going to lift up and across the body and then other side and repeat. Now, if you have tight hamstrings like I do and have a hard time straightening out your legs all the way, or you just don't quite have that rotation through your core yet, you can also modify this movement with bent knees. So you would come up and keep the knee bent on that lift and just kind of reach across to touch the ankle or the shin. And each time you do the crab toe touch exercise in this circuit, you're going to perform it for 10 repetitions on each side. So again, just like our reverse lunge to hop, you're going to do 20 total repetitions each time you go through the movement. Another added benefit of that crab toe touch exercise we just did that I forgot to mention when we were down on the ground demonstrating is that it does again incorporate, going back to our theme, balance training. So a crab toe touch is an exercise that incorporates what's called dynamic balance. So as you're performing the repetition, rising up onto the opposite arm and leg, you're actually incorporating balance by not only stabilizing then on two parts of the body, one arm and one leg that remain on the ground. So that increases the level of challenge involved in the movement because you have to really focus on the control of the body in order to perform the movement correctly and effectively and also maintain your balance at the same time. Now, one thing I do wanna mention as well with the crab toe touch exercise that we just did is that even if you modify the lower leg portion by bending the knees a little bit, it can still be challenging for some to come up onto the wrists and the feet and support your body weight, um, especially if you have any like weak wrists or joint issues at all with the upper body. So another way that you can modify that movement even further is to perform bicycle crunches, because that's gonna be a good way to target the obliques and the lower abdominals as well, while getting some of that coordination and cross body movement in, but without taking it all the way up off the floor and supporting on the arms. So for those of you who might wanna see what the bicycle crunch option looks like as a further modification to the crab toe touch, I'm gonna to show you that now. So you're gonna lay back, place your hands behind your head, lift your legs up to a 90 degree angle, and then bring your upper body across towards your opposite knee, trying to match the opposite elbow to make contact with the knee if possible. And the same side leg is just gonna extend out away from the body. Now, if you choose to perform the bicycle crunch movement as an alternative to the crab toe touch, also perform that for 10 repetitions per side each time you go through the three rounds. So that wraps up both parts of today's workout that focuses on total body strength with an emphasis on balance training today, along with some flexibility and stability as well. So as you go through these movements, really make sure you pay attention to what you're doing, focus on that total body control, maximize the balance work, the stability work, and all the different parts of the movement that make it very intentional. That way you can really maximize the results you get from today's workout. Enjoy!